Okay, so now we're on the Malibu Creek hike with my wonderful friends Elsa and Mark Mabray. And we're just kind of walking on the trail here uh, on the hike. This is like one of the longer hikes, I think. Isn't this like five mile round trip or something like awesome. something, something. I think it's like two and a half miles out and then two and a half back. And then we're going to hang around the, uh, what is it, the, uh, the thing, the MASH site. You know, where they got like the, uh, I think they brought in like another truck because all the other ones were all worn out. So check that out. I Bye. love and I really hanging out with you working out. people. I love hanging out with you working folks. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're retired. I, I, retired and, you know, I, 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 I worked this week. I remember how to do it. I worked this week. Yeah, I, I, I didn't forget. You know what's yeah. so much fun. I worked. I worked. You were born in Moscow. Really? Wow, Moscow. Wow. Okay. So you're so you're a Russian Jew? Russian? No. Jew? Is that what you call? Okay. Is that okay? That is like I sound racist. Russian Jew, does it? No. R Russian Jew. Does that sound racial? No, it's okay. it's a definition. Oh, okay. All right. Good. Okay. You know, some people would. <laughs> I don't know. Just I see. Like we were just talking about he, he, tolerance. Oh, so yeah. you know, I I believe in tolerance. I do. So there's different things. You know, actually, one of the things he, Igor brought up was uh, I, uh, somehow we got on Madonna. And, you know, I was saying earlier that a lot of her music doesn't sound good anymore. Well, maybe the Beatles and even, like, uh, Led Zeppelin. I still like the music because it's good music, yeah, not really just good. pop. Yeah, really good. But, you know, he brought up the fact, he asked me if I, I was uh, offended by some of Madonna's off-the-wall songs that, you know, sort of mock the Catholic Church. Yeah, it kind of, kind yeah, of does. But not really. But what, what, what's your point, then? Uh, I think it was just to, to sell records. Who, Sylvia? Controversial. Oh, Donna. Oh, Donna, yeah, she's, she, she's, uh, she still runs it. Yeah, Donna's there. She's, yeah. Probably not as much. Here we are on our way to the MASH site at the uh, Malibu Canyon hike. He's actually, uh, could be. Yeah. <coughs> Slicha. What does that mean? Uh, excuse me. Slicha? Slicha. Slicha. Okay. Hebrew. Oh, that's Hebrew now. Oh, gosh. Yeah. You know, so you know Hebrew, Russian, and English? Yeah. Or Jewish? Wow. That's pretty good. She knows Spanish and English, and I don't know what else. <laughs> a little what? bit of French. Oh, really? Say something to me in French. Bonjour. Bonjour? Oui. We. What? what? We. We. Oui. I can say we. Oui. I can say parlez. Parlez vous français. Alors, parlez vous français. What does that mean? Moi aussi. What, what was tout sweet? What? Okay, we're saying we speak a little bit of English. Yes, we need to. You know, we had no little phrases here and there. Oh, not to get along you know, and I'm not a very good singer, but I, was I didn't know you were in France. I lived in uh, a French-speaking city oh. for like three years. Oh, so you know French too? A bit. Oh, oh. you guys are amazing. So learning a language is so hard when you get older. Yeah. Trying to learn Korean, it's like, jeez. <laughs> I've been to Korea this summer. Oh, really? And I know two words. Which one? Uh, hello and thank you. Yeah. Sorry? You try? How do you say that? Th 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 thank you. I, 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 I know. Thank you is Kamsahami. Kamsahami, da. Yeah. Hello is Anyang Haseyo. Yeah, that's hello. Yeah. Probably about 100. Do you like the Russian letters? Because like a lot, a, lot, a lot of your alphabet looks like the English alphabet, but then you got these other symbols. Well, the letters that look like the same letters in the English alphabet, do they sound the same? Um, not all of them. For example, P is not P. Is R. P? The letter uh, which corresponds to, that looks like P in, in uh, English. Yeah. So this letter is pronounced as R in, uh, uh, in, in Russian. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. But most of them, are like O is the same. Oh, so. How about Z? Do you have Z? Yes, but it doesn't look the same. It looks like the, the uh, ancient C. Oh, <laughs> really? Okay, but what, 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 what? How about do you guys have T's that look like a T? Uh, yeah. Does it sound the same? Yeah. Okay. 
So there's got to be some some basis for like both languages way back when the languages were invented. Um, I think or that invented. Uh, there is, so first of all, this came from Bulgaria. Bulgaria. Uh, and uh, I think it had the influence from Latin alphabet and also the Greek alphabet. Oh, okay. For example, they have a letter which is P. P? Uh, yeah, and it looks like Pi in the Greek alphabet. It looks like Y? Pi, Pi. Five? Pi, Pi. Oh. P-I. Okay. okay. You know like Pi 3.14? Oh, yeah, Pi 3.1417. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right, right. Okay. Three point. Okay, yeah. So, right. they have the same letter in the Russian alphabet. Oh, uh, okay. But it means, it means a mathematical value. No, it just... Uh, the, the, the oh, in well, Greek it means a mathematical value. Yes. But not necessarily. It's, it's a letter. Okay. It's a letter in the Greek alphabet. Horses. Oh, you got a couple. Oh, you're a nice horsey. What's his name? Macho. Hey, Macho. Macho dog. Macho horse. Macho, Macho horse. This is Macho. That's Ginger. This is Sophie. Okay. Hi, Ginger. Hey, Ginger. How you doing? Hey, Ginger. How you doing? Oh, hey, Sophie. Yeah, we did. Hey, that's a Sophie horse. Sophie, Sophie. Hey, Ginger. Oh, all right. I don't want to cause anything. Because they were, didn't know they were lost. Which is one of the things that usually happens. Here's a mass truck here. You can kind of do a little video here. Mass truck here. So it's just kind of a little video of the condition, overall condition of the truck. Like it's, uh, there's no steering wheel. And it looks like it needs some paint. This here. Got the wrong engine. Yeah, I don't think I want to buy it. You know what kind of options this thing's got? Church on the way. You still go to Church on the way, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So yeah, well, it's it's a mix, so, but it's nice that way, you know. Let's get some. Let's we'll go, Mach. I had a 17 mm -hmm. Did you have your lunch yet? Or your breakfast? Wow. Because it's getting ready to be about lunch time, right? So, How do you like the weather? I have known some people that modify their mouth on their cannon because they like the cannon. Yeah, they, they get itchy. They want to get warm and they get itchy. So what is he? What is it? Right off, she just wants to get what is he eat? she eating? What is that? Oh, it, this just her bit. It's called a cricket bit. Oh, a cricket bit. Okay. So what is the purpose of that? Hey, how's it going, Ginger? You like the weather? Why do you have this over her face? Bugs. Bugs? Oh, they like... Okay. Mosquitoes. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I love this. I love this route. That, that really helps. That really helps, huh? Okay. How come he doesn't have one? He's, he's tough, right? He's macho. Why does he? He doesn't. Her color actually attracts more bugs. Really? Oh. Oh, she's licking my hair. Ginger, you got a lot of long hair, Ginger. She does have a lot of hair. You need a haircut. What kind of what kind of horses is she? This is a horse. Hor really fast. So like a racehorse? Well, that's what they used to be. Yeah, they can oh. really tell cattle. So then, so then, how do you, how can you tell what 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 what, what are the uh, characteristics of a quarter horse compared to is that a quarter horse? No, that's a Missouri fox trot. Missouri fox trot. Okay. Um, some just the the cuts of their body features. Oh. Okay. Head size, things like that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Oh, so yeah. Wow, great. Cool. So they don't get so they don't they won't break their leg as easy or no, it's more of a 
more like if they misstep or whatever, it gives them a little support. Oh, okay. Like you would if, um, Ankle support. Yeah, Look at that. Look, she's, yeah. she's counting. One, yeah. two. She's begging for something. <laughs> Is that what that means? <laughs> she, she was begging for, from Jeff um, candy cane. So I don't know if she's so trying she, to get more candy cane. So when she, when she paws the ground, that's begging? Yeah. Oh. Ginger, how do you know? You got to learn how to beg like Sophie so you can get some food. <laughs> she knows how to do it. Look, is she a paw? Is she not a paw? She can paw. Wow, she's really like a... Uh, no, stop, stop. So that's begging. Begging. Oh, oh my gosh. Where'd you, where, where'd you learn that from, Sophie? Did, was, her, was her mother a beggar? Are these homeless horses? Homeless kid. You have to beg. I've never seen Okay. <laughs> oh, that's what she was begging for. She was, she was begging and pine. Oh, it's an apple. Oh. What was she begging for? She was begging for that. What is it? An apple? Yeah. Oh, 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 horses love apples. I know that. Apples are good for you. What is she begging for? Oh, that's good for you. All right. So here's. So now we're gonna go look at the uh, the Masha hut here. See what they got here. Yeah, this is what MASH is known for. Ah, there's a trash trash bin. Okay, good. Here's the trash. And then here's some of the free. And then uh, driving the golf balls. Okay, sailor. Whatever it is. So, uh. So when, we, when I inspected this vehicle, I found a, found a problem with the engine. It was uh, it wasn't the right engine. Is what happened. Yeah, it wasn't. So it's not, this truck is this Jeep is as valuable because it has the non-original engine. Is that Jeep. Let's count the price now because of that. It is an engine, but it's in the engine compartment. But it's so okay. No, you know, it, it, I'm not sure sure about that. Maybe it could be the right engine actually. But uh, it does have a problem with the um, with the, uh, is, the, the uh, it's using the wrong kind of oil. That, that's that's it. they used the wrong oil in the engine that caused this problem with the engine tilting. The, the engine is tilting because they use the wrong oil in the engine. Yeah, that, 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 a lot of engine tilting problems are caused by incorrect engine oil. So uh, that's the problem with this one. Okay. Yeah, it's two face. Okay, okay, so, okay, so this is a face. You see the, it looks like a face. You got two, nose, uh, two eyes and a big mouth and a long... It looks like the nose is kind of... But it's like the... Uh, an a the aliens came down when they were here. They made their mark on the side of the hill. That's what they look like. <laughs> and now we're going back from the from the uh, mass site. Very rocky trail. I want to go up here. <laughs> You know, it's just too nice. You got to do this the whole time, Brian. Yeah. Hey, Brian, give me a hand down, please. Come on, Brian. Brian, help me out. Help you all. Hey, come on. All right. Thanks for your help. Thank you. You go through all the photos. If you wouldn't believe 1945, he actually worked like a couple of blocks away, and when he bought the car, he decided to he decided to just park the car in the garage that he rented. Right. And he never drove the car. Well, then he got old and didn't drive it. Then he sold it to another guy, and the other guy. What kind of car is driving much? It's a 46 Ford. Oh, it's a 46 Ford coupe. And uh, okay. so he, just, he decided not to drive it. And then the third driver realized he had a classic because that many years had gone by. So he garaged it. So it's been garaged. Now the current owner owns it. So he wants to sell it. Yeah. Right. 
So I may, I'm gonna go check it out. They may well, buy the car. Is it black is it, or is it a It's black. So it's no model, it's just a four, they just call it a 46 Ford? It's not like a 40 foot, it's called a 46 Ford Super Deluxe. Super Deluxe. Uh, Super Deluxe. Uh, well, let me tell you how it really works. What they call a sedan coupe. Okay, so they, they, they didn't have like Crown Victorias or anything back then? No, or? the Crown Victoria came out in 55. And if something's okay. available, okay, Crown Vicky, you have to call it yeah. immediately. Well, Victoria okay. came out in 19, my, uh, there was a Vicky came out number. 19. 31, um, the original Victoria, my little, the Crown Victoria, for? came out in 55. Oh, so they just had a regular Vicky before that? I didn't know that. Yeah, the Vicky, uh, the Vicky the was introduced so in 31 busy. in the Model A Ford. Very uh, good looking car. Had to have like a yeah. humpback, so what, what two door sedan, very good ago. looking car. Long, long door, and then it was like a two door sedan, but it was, but it was uh, more stylish. Okay. More rakish. Really? Now, you know who's into cars? Who? Who's into cars is Linda. Linda is a car expert. If you're one of who is? It's an investment. They can help it's you an get investment. Who's a car? Who's, who, who's a car this expert? Lady right here, Linda. Really? Linda's a car expert. Oh, okay. Here's the thing, if, and I've had old cars for the last. Are you serious, Linda? You're really a car expert. Oh, she knows them. She can tell you a Chrysler for the dog. Especially with the uh, I caught, I kind of inspect okay. cars and I teach about cars. Because with after oh, she's an expert. That basically double. I consider myself. Uh, same amount of we got to talk about twice as many people. We, we are. are. We 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 She can tell you when there's a, a, an AK-47 uh, and a model. We're going to use you. A full AR-15. Oh, gosh. You know, you know. You, you never would suspect you see this nice Asian girl kind of like in the midst of you and you think she's oh, nice and she, sweet and all of a sudden person. she's got, you know, you're talking to her and she pulls out her like Beretta or out of nowhere or something. Oh. You know? Kathy, is, she's, a, she's, a, she's, a, she's, a, she's a deadly weapon and you don't even know she's, she's, Kathy's what we refer to as SPD, Silent the Deadly. What is it? As what? Silent the Deadly. Oh, wow. Hey, oh, gosh. That's, Look at this young man up here. That's her all. That's her alter ego. Like Guerrilla warfare individual. Isn't that funny? <laughs> anyway, pulled from Firestone from 1945 oh, wow. and put original 600 by 16 well, by black so what? Is, so what is a coker? So what do they mean by coker? Coker is just a company that deals in vintage. Uh, oh, okay. And then I'm going to call up Linda and Kathy, and we're going to meet somewhere, and I'm going to take them for a drive. In my 19, if I if I get it, 1946 Ford. Now, there's another car out there that I just saw last night at VoloCars.com, and this is a beautiful, totally restored. Is this the bird? <laughs> yeah, that's it. I thought it was a prehistoric monster. Sound like a pterodactyl. 1938 Ford Standard. Ford Standard. Beautiful. Ford Standard? Yeah. 38 Ford Standard Coupe. I'll bet you that guy wants 50 grand for that thing. It's been restored in oh immaculate condition. Yeah, that's going to cost a lot. I mean, I'm sorry, it's a 39 Ford Standard. Is it a flathead engine? Got it. Flathead engine. Flathead six or four or V eight? It's a it's a V eight. Oh okay. Two hundred and twenty one cubic inch. Yeah, I know. V eight engine. Wow. The... It gets ninety horsepower. Yeah. Linda knows that. Yep. They didn't. Ford wasn't able to increase horsepower until late, 1946. Why was well, that? well, well, the over well, the, well, they just bored out the the cylinder a little wider, and they put four. They got a little better compression. They put four piston rings in with their three before 1942. And they bored out the cylinder, so but, now you have better compression with an additional piston ring and a bored out cylinder where you have a greater dimension of, of uh, Yeah. But the flathead engine wasn't really a but good... But it was a... They went to 100 oh. horsepower. Oh, okay. And then in 1948, Ford finally went over the $2,000 mark for his cars. And then... And then Everything and, had been under 2000 and then they had the Ford Sportsman with two thousand twenty-five dollars. Yeah, that's probably that car art. today is worth two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. A Ford Sportsman? Ford Sportsman. It was a convertible club coupe that had wood on it. Really? Yeah, probably one of the most desirable cars you could ever want. Ford Sportsman. To have a Ford Sportsman would be more desirable well, than you have a Ford Woody wagon. Was that? Was it that? That. It has to be probably more than that. It is. Well, they only made 225 1946 Ford Sportsmans oh, when that car was introduced oh, in 45. Wow. Really? Wow. And the and the war department, the civilian war department, lifted the the ceiling 
on war production on Jan July 1st, 1945, and Japan had not even surrendered yet. They wouldn't surrender until, they wouldn't surrender, I think it was September 3rd or something. September 1st started on July 3rd, 1945. Ford was the first I'm civilian sorry, production. That was the first vehicle that came out on the floor. So, so how many vehicles did they make? Well, you mean how many did they make? Yeah. Well, the Ford Sportsman, they only made 225. Do you know what that wow. car would be worth today to have one of those? Oh my God. So you could find a 47 or a 48, but you'll be hard to find a 47. So you're saying that General Motors and Chrysler weren't building cars during the war? They wouldn't build cars until, they wouldn't build cars till August. And Ford was already, he built, their first car came off the production assembly line on July 3rd, 1945. So there's no new cars there's being... There's sedan. So there's, you, know, there's, you know who it was given to? Who? You know, he's giving, he's taking a video of this. You know it's it interesting. To? President Harry Truman. He bought, a, first, he bought a what? He received the first Ford car off the assembly line. Really? Ford gave it to him on, uh, I think he gave it to him on the 29th of, oh my gosh, 29th of August, 1945. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think it was 29th of August, and then on October 26th. Yeah, that was out of Japan. Of that, it was still Hiroshima. two months away. They were producing all cars yeah, so they can get them out to distributors. And then on October 26th, they called it V8 Day, because remember that the V for victory was po popular in 1940 because it was VE Day. You know what that means, right? Victory in Europe, right? Right, Linda? Victory in Europe, so they called that VE Day in April, in April of 45. And then they had VJ Day, which was victory over Japan. And that was in September. And then the war was officially over. Yeah. So Ford picked up on that little sort of saying and he had V8 Day. And that was when he released to the public the brand new Ford V8 for 1946. You have to remember that. was that. probably the overhead valve uh, uh, engine then. It no, wasn't the flat. overhead valve wouldn't come out until 1954. So what was the difference between that one and the previous flathead V8 engine? Was it like well, the previous flathead, it was just basically the same. It was only, uh -huh. it went from 221 to 239. Uh-huh. So inches. So what? So what, what? What? What was the new? The new one? What, how was it different? Forty-six Ford. Yeah, yeah. They bored out the cylinder an extra eighth of an inch. Oh, okay. And then they had some, you know, they they had some dash changes and grill changes and right that kind of thing. Okay. And they came out with the introduction of the forty, and they got rid of the what they call the uh, uh, not standard. Um, they called it something else. I can't remember. There was another standard. Transmission? The standard. Are you filming this whole thing? Well, I, I, this is, I, if I don't hear it, I'll in, forget. In, 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 in which factory did they use? W which factory was that in? It was called Willow Run. Willow Run. Willow Run? Willow Run, and I think it was in Michigan. So, so... So the so the military just confiscated their their factory to build B twenty fours. Confiscate. What happened is the the car they were paid by the government. Oh yeah. And they voluntarily uh, went over to military production. That's right. Over to military production for the next three and a half years. But so people had to do people had to do with what they had for three and a half years. No new cars were sold. Yeah. The only people that could buy a new car were what do you think? The wealthy, of course. No. Not even the wealthy. They had to do with what they had. Military and services like doctors, um, uh, service companies like plumbers for trucks. The only thing that was produced civilian-wise during that time period during the war were trucks. Different sized trucks. Really? And the reason they did that was because they were utility vehicles for like utility companies because the country had to continue to run right, yeah. to supply the war machine. So people were just driving their used cars? They were driving their used cars. The one thing Ford was allowed to produce were parts for those used cars. So we okay. had small assembly lines on the uh -huh. side that would produce, you know, radiators or, you know, a few extra. How about, how about GM and Chrysler, though? They all the same. Okay, they were the same. All, yeah, they were mandated. It was uh, called the Civilian War Agency or something like that. And they they monitored and regulated all, all uh, building of the um, vehicle. Parts. Hallelujah. Howdy, Benny. Hallelujah. 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 Anyway, so there you go. Wow, that's interesting. If you guys want to know any more, you're going to have to talk to Linda. She's got all the details. <laughs> <laughs> it varied, I think, with, you know, anything. Any different parts of the battle. That's the first. Oh, my God. That is correct. Like what he just said, everything that, all metal, plastic, paper, everything went yeah. forever. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's why people opened what they called victory gardens, and those were little tiny. That's like you'd take all your pretty rose bushes and flowers out, and you would grow vegetables in your garden. Everybody did that back then. So you would build a victory garden in your, and you might even pick up your lawn and dig it up and mulch it and grow vegetables for yourself because everything was shipped to the soldiers to the front line. Yeah. To the British, the Canadians, the because the soldiers came first. So anything that we made, like he was saying, all the metal, uh -huh. alloys, plastics were brand, brand new at that time. It was basically made of soybeans. Did you know that? All no. Food. It was made of soybeans? Soybeans. Plastics originally, the grandfather The planes were made out of soybeans? It was soybean. That was the, that was the grandfather to plastic. Are they going to take another break? Or they wouldn't develop plastic. Well, I don't think so. We normally yeah. take a break at this spot. Yeah, but they don't on the way back. I think we just yeah, go for the big do, call. but... I don't, I don't want to. Well, let's just trudge ahead. <laughs> I'm going for the big I'm going to charge. I'm going to go for the now, gold. Now, here's an I want interesting thing. Try to. <laughs> I know the trites of gold. I know you that sounds that. good. I want gold and trites. make it happen. So plastic is interesting. As you guys know, that it's because of war, and that's how we develop new medicine. That's how we do med medical techniques. When we develop new technology, it's done because of war mainly. Yep. Um, yeah. You know, like plastic really came out of the war. That's why it was very popular. Nowadays, we would think of it as cheap, but... Back in the 1940s, in the mid-40s, plastic was a brand new technology. So Ford and all the other companies, Chevrolet included, they would adorn their dashes on the cars with plastic because that was a new, brand new thing and it was very cool. That's why plastic became very popular in the late 40s and in the early 50s, mainly in homes. It became a style, plastic radios instead of wooden radios. Wow. And there you go. And it goes on and on and on. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It's like uh, 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 what what is the mother of, of invention? They say uh, uh, something is a mother. Disaster. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you know, when we have to or, when you or, have to come out of the ashes of things. Necessity and war is always coming out of the ashes. Necessity is a mother of invention or something. Right, because they're it's like it's an emergency, and so yeah. you got to start thinking. So people put on their thinking cap and invent uh, new things. And, well, that's a, that's but these two girls here will get a ride in the brand new 46 Ford Coupe. <laughs> when I get it, I'll make sure they come to Ventura. Right. I'll take them for a tour. I'll yeah. get these girls in that car. Is it, is Whatever it? old car I get, I'll take these girls in the car. Sounds we'll probably take a drive up the But the car would only go 84 miles an hour. Why is that, Scott? Top that's, speed. That's interesting. Why I don't know. They just, well, they, just to make it look even and nice. Well, you, well you, you don't want to always ever peg the speedometer. You could damage it. I'm so. sure if you did, I'm sure if you did some, you know, engine enhancement, put on an extra yeah, 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 muffler yeah. on there, so you allowed more exhaust. Yeah, and that could there be, you go. Probably get it up to 100. Yeah. You know, they could do those kind of things. Here comes Linda. Here comes Linda, Linda number two. Calling in with her Colorado shirt. Yeah. So how many people that drove a Ford would have white wall tires? Crooks or rich people? Nobody. Because oh, nobody. rich people didn't buy Fords. They drove oh, okay. Cadillacs, Buicks. Oh, right, right. Okay. Okay. The common car for the common man was a Ford. So if you look at any Ford advertising, any Ford stock photographs from that period of time, what are you going to see the car with? Black walls, because that's what they drove. Uh, Model A's in the 1930s, the 30 Ford V8s, uh -huh. all the way through the war, white walls wouldn't become popular till after the war, when people had money and the country began to profit. So that's why I would never have white walls on my car, because it's not realistic. Uh, and, black not, walls. Like and most everybody drove with black walls. If you look at old movies in the 30s and 40s, there are very few people that have white wall tires. All the way through the 30s into the into the mid 50s. Really? Wow. Very but whenever they showed Al Capone drive up, those they're they're uh, cars. Well, they have white walls because very wealthy people yeah. were able to afford them, and that was the way they could distinct themselves from other people and be distinguished. Uh, is yeah. to have white white walls, right, and that right. would tell the rest of the world out there you had money. Yeah. So it was a social distinction. Nowadays, way to flaunt, flaunt it. Flaunt, exactly. Flaunt, flaunt, the first flaunt, first methods of flaunting. So, let's get around these nice folks here. No, yeah, they're actually they're they're moving pretty good. Yeah. So anyway, there's the story about all kinds of different facts of the car. Oh, wow, that's pretty interesting. Though. No, yeah, I didn't know that. It's kind of interesting. And the there's all kinds of different changes that took place with Ford. Uh huh. Uh, you know, the Model A ceased production in yeah. the spring of 19. 
It uh, did. I'm sorry, December, I think, 31. Oh, yeah? And they started making the, the uh, Ford V8, the first Ford V8. So then the model, the model A didn't have a V8? No, the Model A had a four flathead four-cylinder engine. It was okay. 200.5 cubic inches. Okay. Probably about 60 horsepower or something, right? Uh, actually, 40. 40, okay. And then the first V8, Ford flathead V8, had 60 horsepower. Okay. And then it would go up to 85. So this is still in the 30s? And then it went to 90, and then it went to 100. This is in the 40s, then? 30s. The 30s. So. Yeah. Okay. And then in 1941, it had... In 1941, the, uh, if I'm not correct, I think it went to 90 horsepower. Yeah, 90 horsepower. Yeah, yeah. 40, 40 was 85, 41 was 90. Okay. It was 90. Which way do we go? Left. Left. Who said left? Okay, this is good. I'm not. Left. I, 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 I want it to be a majority rule here. This stuff I enjoy reading about and learning about. And it's, inter it's interesting. It's interesting. It is kind of interesting. You know, here is probably one of the most interesting. Um, I don't know. That's one question I need to get answered. Why did they do that? They did it twice. They did it in 35 and they did it in 1940. Huh. They probably tried it and then it, then and then it got everybody to see what everybody thought of it and then they kind of did some primary probably. marketing. And they, they probably did and figured people out that missed people, the Wood Grain Dash. Yeah. That's what we're having. But then, could be. in 1942, 41, they went back to a wood grain, 41, 42. Okay. And then, no, I mean, and then they, in 46, they left it forever. Yeah. Because of the cost. It was just, it was, Ford always tried to save as much money as they could to give quality. Yeah. Perseverance. Look at that beautiful landscape. Isn't that beautiful? So there you go. There's the story of. Wow. Those are just different. I mean, there's other guys that know a lot more than I do about it. Uh, the specifics about this. Right. I understand. It's interesting, man. Good. I like that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's really interesting. The first Model T. Now, remember when Ford came out with his first car in 1903, called the Ford Motor Company. It was called a Model A. It was called a Model A first? He called it the Model A in 1903. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, that was the same year as Linda knows and Kathy that on December 17th, 1903, the Wright brothers right. flew the first self-powered flight airplane. So, 1903 was a critical year. Well, what Ford did is he wanted to improve on his car on his automobile so what he did is he had the model a model b model c d e f he skipped a couple of letters and then finally in 1908 he hit upon the perfect combination of components seating uh, engine everything and he came out and guess what guess what letter he hit on t the model t so you, you mean though those other that there are actual model c cars the mo that were built sure, the model You're r kidding. the model Yes, right. And, and how, finally, do any of them look yes, significantly different than the Model T? You'd have to read the book on the Model T, but he'll he'll talk about I didn't how know it that. changed. So the Model T was the perfect storm for Henry okay. Ford. So in 1908, they made a few Model T. So those were probably like prototypes, the A's and B's, and they kind of no, they were they were they sold them. I mean, they were they out really there, sold. But they, them. Yeah, they sold Model N's. They sold those the must tests. be worth a lot of money, man. The S was a perfect car, but it was missing a couple of things to make it perfect. Okay. So finally, when Ford came upon upon the letter T, that car that he created when they hit T was the perfect car. Okay. In his opinion, so the Model T it was. So the Model T was first built in 1908, and they would continue the Model T Ford for 19 years, uh, up until the year 1928. Wow. They ceased all production at the urging of his son, Edsel, who was really the father of the Model T. His, son was, his, his son's son name was, was Edsel? Na his son, I didn't know that. Yeah, and he, of course, <laughs> they named the Ford after him. Of course, Edsel was long That was the worst. Gone. That was the worst car I ever built. That's why the, he was the worst son. That's why. Well, no, no, not Edsel was a great son, but the father was, was not a good father. He was very cruel oh. and mean to his son, but not very loving. Uh, Henry Ford was. Yeah. He would demand it a lot from his son, and the son could never meet up to his expectations. But anyway, so the Model T was created up until the year 1927, and then they ceased production in, I think it was May.
May or June uh -huh. 27th. And they started production. So that's the only car that they, they, uh, the they only retooled. model car that three months to retool. So that's the only car they were selling at all was a Model T. Right. And okay. they retooled all summer. They started wow. to build the car. The first Model K came off the line. The first brand new, they called it the Model A. You know why they called it a Model A again? They started up. Because yeah. it was a brand new car for a brand new generation. Uh -huh. The Model A was a whole new animal. It wasn't the Model T anymore. Now it went up from 20 horsepower for the Model T to 40 horsepower in the Model A Ford. So the Model T was sold only 20 horsepower all the way up through 20, 1927. That's correct. Was, was it a four cylinder? Was, How many cylinders was it? Was it was operated, the gear shifting was all operated on the pedals on the floor. And then it, so and, it and then advanced the timing, you had the lever, right? To that's advance, right, you'd advance that's, that's the timing to, to, and to, your, to, to increase the power. Was, the gas was all on the lever too. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so right. in 1928, they came out with a brand new car, the car that we now know today for three-speed shifting and everything else. Uh -huh. The shifting of a Model T, even I would have to learn how to drive a car like that. Wow. But anyway, so the Model A was a brand new car, the car that we now know as today as the modern driving car. Uh -huh. And that one went from 20 horsepower. Now it went 40 horsepower. It could drive up to Ford advertised up to 65 miles an hour. Although I never got mine over 50. Oh yeah. But you could if you had a if you had a uh, if you had a. So you got a, you own a model, gear, you own a Model A. I had a Model A. I just sold it in November. I had a oh. 29 Ford two door sedan. Oh wow, wow, pretty good. Because I want a V8. So yeah, yeah. Ford made the. Hi, folks. Ford, good. Thank you. Ford made the Model A in 1931. Okay. And uh, 1928 to 31. So they sell, so, so, but, but it was still, they only had that one model of a vehicle available to the public was the Model A. That's correct. In various, you know, either convertible or hard, I yeah, guess. Yeah, you get convertible two door sedan, yeah, yeah, four door yeah. sedan. Okay. And okay. the Model T had several, you know, varieties. And uh -huh. they, but they wouldn't come out with the classic Woody station wagon, uh, yeah. not until 1929. 29 was the first yeah. true Woody station wagon ever built. And it, and it was. Ford. And it was based on the Model A. It was on the Model A chassis, correct? Oh, but it was, it was, but it was different. So the body looked a lot different than no, the Model. No, no, it was it was just a Woody station wagon. Uh huh. But it was it was a Model A Woody, but it, it didn't come out in twenty eight. It came out in twenty nine. Okay. Because Ford came out with that. Oh, okay. Prior to that, station wagons that had wood on the side were called depot hacks. Depot hacks. Hacks, right? And they would transport passengers and luggage and train stations to. Vacation spots, that kind of thing. Wow. And that was called a depot hack. But until 1929, a depot hack. and then 29, they originated what they call the station wagon. Oh, yeah, yeah. We call them woodies today, but the technical term would be uh, station wagon. Okay. And then the station wagon, of course, you know, evolved, of course, before. But then they quit producing the. I'm listening, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. That's okay. They quit producing the, the Model A and the. Let's see, I'm trying to think. I just read this not long ago. Um, in 1932, I think. No, 31. Okay, so. Okay, so. So the flathead V8, the 32 flathead V8 was released in the spring, I believe. Don't get me. Don't correct me. Right. I think the spring of 32. So they, they, didn't have, they didn't go six cylinder at all. It was just like either four cylinder or the V8. They had no six cylinder engines. They, they did. They offered a six cylinder. Straight six. They started, wait a minute, that's a good question. They started, no, they didn't have, at first they had the four and they had the eight. And then Ford was, because of the competition with uh, with General Motors, they came up with a six, I think. Let me see if I get this right. I think they came up with a six and 39. Really? I think it was 39 or 38. They came out with a six, flathead six cylinder. I think it was 39. Okay. Don't quote me on that, but I think it was 39. It was 38 or 39. And that was in the Model A also? No, remember the Model A was done in 31. Yeah, 31. Okay, so... 32 was the flathead. So you have three distinct periods of time. You've got the Model T period, yeah. 1908 to 27. Okay, okay. You've got the Model A period, very short, 1928 to 31. Okay. Then you had the Ford flathead. Eight. Now the flathead V8 engine. But I mean, but I'm, but but I mean, the other ones are referring to a model of a car, but the other ones are referring to a model of an engine. But you, you're saying that that they, that the car was based was uh, uh, the flat by, by by saying the flathead V8 was that that wasn't available in the Model A. Or? No. 
I'm no. trying to understand. The V8, the V8 engine was not was not in. But they weren't. But they weren't calling it a Model A. They were calling it the flathead V8 for the car. No, the Model A car was a specific type of car, and it okay. only, only offered a flathead four. Engine. Okay. Okay. Flathead four. Got it. Got it. Okay. Remember, the flathead engine was all that Ford would build. All the way up to 1940, all the way up to 1953. There we go, go this way. 1953. Where are we going, Scott? We're going this way. Why? Well, you go that way if you want. I'm going this way. Is it, is it, does this go to the parking lot? You're a grown adult. You can do whatever you want. I don't ever tell anybody what to do. Yeah, right. I understand. Oh, hey, hey, are we going back to the parking lot this way? There she is. How are you? Does this go to the parking I lot thing? Back well, this. yeah. Well, I want to go. to the parking lot, too, but not yeah. the way we came here. All right. Well, I, I, I like parking lots. I, that way I feel like we're back in civilization where I see cars again. See, this is like this is like a wilderness almost. Oh, right? wow. You, yeah. you get nervous? Yeah. Come on. You're you're Mr. Whitney. You survived Whitney. Yeah. You yeah, survived big deal. hypothermia. Oh, gosh, man. That was, uh, I, that was like my worst hike. I hate oh, yeah, you were totally unprepared. I know. If I had known, I had the extra, you know, um, I think actually it was this one was my extra shirt. I left yeah. it in the, the truck. If I had like uh, yeah. four layers, I used three of them on the hike, depending. Yeah. Know, it, we went in in the morning, it kept yeah. getting colder. I know, I know. I, I just was dead tired from and the beginning of that hike. I, I water, what yeah. was it? Actually, that was Saturday, so it was like... Sunday yeah. morning is yeah. when we ascended. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was in good shape. Hey. And yeah, it helped to have the rest. Yeah, that was it. Actually, you know, I didn't wear my brace on the Friday hike and my knee was a little sore. So oh, really? Oh. And just having the brace made a big difference. 